action. All right. <laughs> action. <laughs> okay. So the funny thing is, the funny thing is, um, so me and Trader were talking about like we we're huge wrestling fans. I'm sure you know that. And yeah, yeah. what's crazy is he told me that when I was in high school, wrestling was not cool. Like if you, yeah, you know, yeah. But then. He told me you guys had a thing called JWO, <laughs> and it, he was like, "That was the thing." For back life, in the day. Like, yeah. he was like, JWO yeah. for yeah. life. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, man. So I mean, it's for you life, know, you know, dog. So uh, yeah, we kind of did our thing with the with the wrestling. Uh, man, we could go deep with this story, but we'll we'll keep it short and sweet. So JWO Junior World Order, man, it was kind of funny. We took the school over. We man. did. We really did. Uh, you know, we had. I mean, we were we were hitting teachers with the stunner. <laughs> Uh, nobody I mean, was safe back then. The, nobody. Like, nobody was safe. Nobody. So, I mean, the thing is, the speculation on the street was that you guys kind of ran stuff. You know, I had heard <laughs> through the grapevine, you guys had taken over pep rally, stuff we like did. that. Is that, that, is, that, is that, that the is case? Accurate. That is that is 100% the, the, the case. The pep rallies were insane, dude. That was the best part, man. Yeah. Like, we looked forward to it, you know? It was yeah. cool. Pep rallies are cool anyway, right? You, yeah. You get to get out of school for a couple minutes, watch the basketball team, you know, they're doing their thing. But <laughs> I tell you, man, it, it quickly became came what's the jwo gonna do yeah how are they gonna show up and i don't want to get any teachers in trouble yeah but there was a couple teachers that were that were with it man they, really mark yeah, evans mark evans like, for life yeah, they, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude we were rolling the pep rally so like you know the football team would come in right or whatever and then like you know we all hang out so we would literally walk in these pep rallies with like wrestling signs yeah yeah and, and people were like loving it so at one point you know how like every school has a spirit stick yeah so Everybody w w was like all about this. It was just fun, right? Yeah. So we went and made our own spirit stick. Remember this? Like <laughs> in, in shop class. We So they had this like spirit st stick that had been around Delmar High for like, I don't know, decades or something, right? Yeah. So we go to shop class and make our own spirit stick, trick this thing out way bigger, way better, more elaborate, you know, wrap it all in like black and white tape, yeah. got JWO on it. So at the pep rally, every class would like pass the spirit stick around and you'd get the spirit stick and you'd be like, everybody cheer who could get the loudest pop, right? right? So when it makes our way to like us, the juniors, we take the spirit stick, pull out, whip out ours, and we put up the JWO stick. Everybody's like, yeah, the JWO yeah, the for went life. Up, the yeah. went so, so my question is like, were you, was everyone a part of it? Who, like, was this like, was it an exclusive membership only to the JWO? Like what, how, so, how did you qualify to be in? I mean, you know, for starters, I don't really remember. I think it was mostly just kind of our, our clique that was in. But then, you know, these people would secretly come up and say, you know, how do we get in the JWL? <laughs> <laughs> like, go stun somebody. You gotta go stun them. <laughs> go okay, so that yeah. was a, it was like almost a gang initiation. It was like, uh, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, but kind of, I don't know. I mean, this but is, it, uh, let's yes, be honest, yes, okay? Yes. Like you, what you just said was yes. initiation. It was, it was like, uh, yeah, I guess. You had to stun somebody it, it, to be it, it was a friendly other. gang, you know what I mean? It was, it, it was, it yeah. was, it was your neighborhood, it was like Spider-Man, neighborhood friendly, you know, kind yeah, of gang. Yeah, I remember this one time, this kid, dude, we had a really, really large gentleman and uh this really small kid but we, we always joked because he was stacked man and uh he he put this guy up in the rack one day was it matthews rack. On, on the back of the pickup truck he put it was, dude in the rack and dude, torture this, rack. Literally, oh, this was yeah, literally the in the literally. back of a pickup truck in the middle of the parking lot after school yeah it was and insane. like nobody cared like today i don't think any of this could go on it was insane it, it, oh my yeah. god i mean well there was a lot of hazing that went on back in the day that definitely would not Dude, I, I tell you what, though, it, it made it fun. It made the day yeah. go by. You know, it made, you know, it made for a good time. It, I'll, I'll it, just say everybody that. was cool with it. Like, it was like, like Tommy said, it was all fun. Like, we would do it, but people would know you're kind of joking. But, like, literally, if you were in Del Mar High for about a year or two, your head was on a swivel. Like, am I getting yeah. stunned today? That's true. Teacher, it was like so you, nobody was safe. Yeah. Nobody was safe. Did Remember you, the time I stunned the one kid? His book bag flipped over his head. Yeah. It wasn't good. <laughs> Ten minutes later, dude. I'm getting called to the office, and the cops are in there. And I, and that, 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 that was, yeah, that was tough assault to explain. Charges, dude. You're like, we're we're you're in. like it's a joke. I'm just, we're kidding, but I. I what did. made it worse is it was her son. She was she was oh, the cop. So that, 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 that was uh, dude. That's dude, yeah, that, that, that was tough, man. But that, you know, secretly the principal was going for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, See, man. What's what? So I don't know if that was going on, but either way, they were all cool with it. But did you guys did you guys make like little t-shirts or something <clears throat> like that absolutely like did you you know what i mean absolutely. like the jwo uh, it was cool right back yeah. to the like teachers, what we should you know. do is let's just get let's let's do a limited run let's get some merch jwo oh, okay. merch I think we should. I almost wore the JWO shirt under this and tore this See, off. See, that would have made the day, dude. <laughs> I, I was going to do it. Hey, we'll have another episode. So Maybe next let time. me ask you a question. So if I wanted to be initiated in this group, 
Yeah. Maurice is getting stunned. You got to stun Maurice, man. No. <laughs> you got to stun Maurice, like, man. I, I feel like we need Maurice, so I can't, no, I can't do that. He's got um, big sexy with him, so I don't think you're stunning Maurice, bro. No, I'm not, well, I'm not stunning either of those two. First off, I'd have to be able to reach up that high, okay? And that's not happening, okay? But, no, I, I think we should do, like, a, a, a limited run on T-shirts or yeah. something. Let's, I think we let's should. Make some, I'm with that. Let's, let's make some T-shirts. Let's bring sexy back. Yeah, dude, let's do it, man. Yeah. Let's do it. I, um, so there's one moment I do got to share with you. All so right, do it. I, uh -oh. I, got, I have to tell you. There's no way I could talk about JWO and not share uh -oh. probably the most epic move of all times. <laughs> so well, we're working on prom one year, right? And while we're constructing the prom set, we come across this particle board. It didn't really hurt nobody. Yeah. Well, we realized we could just, like, you know, bang particle board over each other's heads. So we're literally in the middle of the prom just wasting all the material, just, you know, smashing particle. Yeah. So look, Tommy is on like, I don't know, it was like very high up on the bleachers. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. And, and oh, like no. everybody's stunning this people. Setup, you look is, over yeah. and Tommy literally DDTs, like straight up Exposed DDTs, concrete, a kid DDT. from like the top of a bleacher Dude, down no. like three or four bleachers. I mean, it was, is a, is and the kid, kid okay? I, I thought he I probably he wasn't. It, he jumped he up it. and was like, yeah, I just got so DDT. Okay. I mean, cause I don't want to laugh <laughs> well, if before. If we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. So you know in the old gyms, you know, they push the bleachers in. And yeah. it was just the top one, right? Oh, no. Yeah, dude. so I was creeping down the wall. You did the Jeff Hardy the wall, Creeping down the wall, <laughs> and I just grabbed him. I just went for it. You know what I mean? I was oh in the dude. zone, and we're talking <laughs> 10 feet in the air. I mean, all the way to the basketball dude, court. This, and I'm, I jumped up like, yeah! And I'm like, oh, man, this, this, this assault. This is that's, real. That's, yeah. so, he was uh, cool with it, though. He made it, man. He, he was he, cool he, with he, it. You know what? He was proud to be DDT'd. By somebody by the, from the, the JWO. JWO. You know what I mean? He was That's what it created. So he did he you knew <laughs> that if he got up, you know, it was it, so you could you could you would have maybe spray painted the JWO on his back if he didn't get up. I uh, I think that may have happened. Or ran away. Yeah. I don't know if we were spray painting people. Up. We're probably making this sound a little bit better than it was, but it was really cool. So there like, I have a feeling memory's like, cloudy. It, a long time. it was really cool. Yeah. But. I have a feeling that multiple people will probably come out and be like, You guys were bullies. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Like, no, it might be. I, don't I don't think, think so, so, man. We were fun. We were fun. Man. We had fun. We loved everybody. I'll tell you what, man. I, I don't think so because even some of the kids that that weren't cool, you know, which was probably us at that time, yeah, right? Too, exactly. You know what I mean? Some <laughs> of the kids that were cool, man. Right? JWO gave them something. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It gave them something. We were heroes. That was man. the cool. I feel like we were okay, heroes. That dude, was the cool thing twist, about dude. Delmar, though. That he made, this is really a good. The cool thing about Delmar is is no matter where you came from, who you are, what class you were from. Everybody kind of loved everybody. You know, we were all we were all accepting. You know, yeah. whether it was the JWO or just Del Mar in general, man. That's one thing I think that really uh, has benefited us in life was I've growing up in a town that. like that. It I really agree. is. I've always heard that about Del Mar. It's like a big community. It's yeah, a very big, big community, and and everyone's kind of all you know accepting and all that stuff. So yeah. I've always heard that. But that's pretty cool. I mean, true, yeah. I, I I couldn't say the same thing. Or like in high school, <clears throat> wrestling was not. You know, you could yeah. go around and be like, dude, I'm a fan. <laughs> and they'd be like, okay, something's wrong with this dude and his brain. So I remember, so it's always funny when Trader tells me the story because it's like, dude, I don't have the same experience. Like wrestling, <laughs> while, while wrestling was cool for you guys, yeah. I was in middle school. Like I was in elementary, middle school. So, I are mean, we that old Trader? Yeah, we are. Oh, I didn't realize this until recently. Yeah, dude. Shane I mean, carries himself a lot older than, than you know, he's old, he's soul. old soul. Man. I'm an old soul, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Then so, I'm an old soul. So what's up? So are you ready to start this? I, I, we could talk about JW all day, but no, nah, let's do it. <laughs> right. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right. Like Tone low. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Prop Culture Podcast. I am your host, Matt Trader. And to my left, as usual, is my tag team partner in crime, the one and only Mr. Shane. Snoots, ladies and gentlemen, and today, life. today, life. good <laughs> God, today, we have a very special <laughs> guest on here, a guy that I've been friends with for over 30 years, the Dale Earnhardt of Del Mar, the one and only, the racing realtor, for, 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 for life. Mr. For life. Tommy <laughs> Burdett, for, 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 for life. Okay, like for that. Life. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to the, the club, clip. boy. Yeah, yeah, the clip. Racing yeah. realtor. Thanks oh, for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. So, so look, it's, it's funny that we talk about you know being all-encompassing, and I think it's a great way to segue in, into this. So, Tommy, one of the, the things that I think speaks volumes about having you on the show today is one of the, the big focal points that Shane and I are trying to accomplish here 
on this show is bringing the whole real estate community together. We don't care where you're from, you know, who you're affiliated with. I think, you know, we live in probably the most cutthroat environment that I've ever seen in business, real estate and everything. And everybody loves to talk about collaboration. But most of the time, the collaboration really doesn't happen unless you're working on a deal. Like rarely do you see somebody on camera together or marketing together or putting somebody else's business over because you're so, I don't know, either ego gets in the way or whatever. You're so worried about being the big dog, yep. you know? And so I think having you on from the Del Marva home team, Shane with the Maryland Delaware Group of Long and Foster and me with Rainier Development Company, we have three completely different brokerage brokerages here today. And I just think that speaks speaks volumes, you know, about, yeah. about what we're trying to do. And we appreciate you being on here. Yeah, absolutely, man. Glad to be you here. You know, you and Shane have known each other for a long time. Well, and, I think it's huge. As well. I think it's huge. And I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, you're man. fine, man. Uh, I, I think I think the big part about all of this is we're it's a fraternity, you know, per se. Like as real estate agents, we shouldn't look at each other as competition. We're actually making ourselves you know, better by having real estate agents. Cause Lord knows, like I do truly fully think that they would love for automation to kick in for real estate agents. And this mm -hmm. is something that we've been talking about, me yeah. and Trader have been talking about, but I, you know, I think that, you know, as real estate agents, we have to like appreciate each other because at the end of the day, that means our business is surviving, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like, if you don't get a listing, you don't get a buyer, whatever the case is, at least they're paying that percent to an actual agent, right? That's right. And not the red fins of the world or those the people. Zillow's yeah. Other. And that's where like, I guess to the outside world, they don't understand that our business is really actually under attack when it comes to Constantly. those, those, because a lot of people don't even understand what we do as real estate agents yeah. and kind of, you know, we are the boots on the ground. You can have a Zillow, you can have a, a red fin, you can have all this, but that you don't have somebody that's actually troubleshooting the issues live, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really big for all of us to always kind of be a part of this fraternity together, you know, because sure. we hold each other accountable. It makes us better. It sharpens our tools, right? Yeah. So I, I always think that. Um, and I know for a fact, you started at where I did with property with management. You. Yes. And Day that's, one. That's yeah. first guy I went into, Shane Snoots. This is, I've heard these what, stories. What's what's funny is, that. You're going to hear them again. This, <laughs> so this is the best part is Tommy started in real estate where I think everyone should start at in property management. I Agreed. think if you get your real, like I told you, you should, the real estate course, it teaches you ethics. It yeah. teaches you, you know, fair housing, all that guidelines, what you take with you. But outside of that, it doesn't walk you through a transaction, no, right? At all. And he got to see property management at its base level mm -hmm. of what real estate transactions are and how real estate works. And he started with us and tell us a little bit about that because we had great times together. Oh, like, man, we had we had killer times. Yeah. So, you know, the day one I had, you know, I started with you and you and Brandon over there and uh, gave me a shot and I show up and they stick me with you, man. And I'm like, <laughs> first day, all right, cool. Like, what, what do we do now? Yeah, like, you know, and Shane's in there. We go, you know, so, so I, you know, for me, I just uh, I just dove in, man. And and you guys kind of showed me the ropes. So that was cool, man. How do you think property management has helped shape you in, in this business? People, yeah. you know, you know, in property management, you get, well, in real estate too, but, but you know, you, you get all walks of life, man. Yeah. You get a lot of different emotions, a lot of different feelings, a lot of, you know, this, that, and the other, and you learn how to, to spearhead situations, you know, cause real estate's about spearheading situations yeah. and putting out fires, you know? So I, I think the biggest thing that helped me going right into to property management was putting out fires or learning yeah. how to do that. I know you're, you're good at that. I try. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that you just dove right in. And one of the things I noticed about you, you know, I, you got into real estate and it was like, okay, Tommy's in real estate, and which I've, I've known you my whole life, so I knew that would work mm -hmm. out because you, you've got the gift of gab, but <laughs> you literally, I, I've not seen anybody, and this is not me patronizing you at all, sure. or, you know, pumping up, you know, to the rest of the, the, the world, but I mean, you can, you, you, you I can. we will yeah, later, I'm okay with it. but, but I've, I've, I've never seen anybody go from like zero to a hundred as really? fast as you did in, in yeah. a very short period of time. And so it's, you know, I guess it makes sense that you call yourself the racing realtor. Yeah. And I think a lot of what you did probably it has to do with what we discussed on the show last week, which was self branding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know I don't know many people who self brand as well as you do. I appreciate and that. And the question I have for you is, is because you, you, you went from literally a guy who's racing cars to now real estate, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, it's hard to, you know, perceptually to, to see these things merge. Yeah. At what point 
did you decide you were going to be the racing realtor? What, when did that moment happen? Where did the idea come from? Like, I'm really curious to so, know this. So I can kind of tell you exactly where I was and what I was doing. I, I was meeting with another agent uh, at a coffee shop, local coffee shop, Rise Up. And uh, we were kind of kicking it, talking about, you know, do you want to join my team? Do I want to join your team or whatever? And we, I, th I think at the time we were actually doing a real estate transaction. And I said, man, you know, I said, I'll, I'll get you to the finish line. Yeah. And then a light bulb went off. Honestly, like, right. I had said that a hundred times mm -hmm. and I was admittedly thinking about racing while I was sitting there talking to this guy. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a race coming up or something. I went, dude, I got to go. Yeah. And he was like, well, what you, we're in the middle of, uh, where are you going? <laughs> where I, was, I was like, man, I got to go. <laughs> yeah. So the whole way home, I was excited. I'm like, people are going to think it's stupid. You know, my wife's going to laugh. Everybody's going to laugh at me. And then the more I thought about it, man, I, I, I raced all the way home and I said, Listen to this. This is what I got. What yeah. do you think about this? What do you, I mean, it, it just kind of, it was crazy. And, you know, my wife being a good person as she is kind of talked me through it and was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, yeah. you know, you can put together racing and what you do for a living and, yeah. you, you, you know, you can make both work for each other. So that's the short version. That's yeah. kind of how we came up with it one day. And I, I just, I just ran with it, man. It's I, brilliant. Yeah. Shane, or Shane and I were talking about it the other day. Go ahead, Shane. Yeah. No. It's funny because I, I I watched Tommy's growth from day one. Like, and what you have to understand is Tommy was working in property management. He was doing inspection. He was doing whatever. You know, mm -hmm. he was calling. He was scheduling maintenance. And then in the at night, he was driving to the Bethany office, Long and Foster office, to take your class. It's true. You were literally like when I when I <laughs> when he says he jumped head first. Like he literally was like, I don't have my license yet. Can is there anything I can do prior to getting this? Like yeah. anything and we're like, Well, in property <clears throat> management in the state of Maryland, you don't have to be a property manager, you don't have to be licensed. That's like one of the sneaky things about property management <laughs> is that people don't have to be licensed and I have my own opinion on that kind of stuff. But Tommy was like, "What? Well, I just want to learn. Like, just tell me stuff. Like, is there something I can do? Mm -hmm. So we were like, oh yeah, like we'll get you in property management. You just, you know, you'll be on the staff and, and you'll help and you can, you know, watch showings and everything. But Tommy was so committed to the craft of it. Yeah. Like, you know, on, on things like where we would uh, uh, make phone calls and stuff like he was always trying to learn and pay attention because we, you know, we do a lot of the pre-qualification calls where we're calling to make sure that they can meet the conditions of our application and stuff like that. And Tommy's like, okay, so they need this and this. And we put it on speakerphone. There was yeah. plenty of times where Tommy would, add, and he was never shy about asking questions. And that's what you, but you could see the growth from there until when we got in our new office together. Yeah. And Tommy was a big, you know, he was a big proponent of wanting those call nights. Cause we yeah, had a beer tap in the them. office and he'd be like, let's get this call nights together. Yeah. You know, after you were licensed everything, you're like, yeah, I want to sit down and bang the phones. You could see he was just eager to get into it. So what it were those call nights like? They were fun, man. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's funny cause I, I still do them with my team today and uh, it works. And I, I can remember some of the first call nights where it, it was, I was, I was a little nervous. Yeah. You know, I was a little nervous and, uh, I was kind of a walker, you know. They'd be like, "Tommy, you're up," and I'm like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna go out here." So, were you like, in, was like, was like, was this like boiler room where you guys are all room, man. like yeah, all in the same room tank. trying to see if you got one? Well, like, kind of. So we all have, you know, our, our CRM platform, our lead generation source, yeah. and you know, Brandon would try to kind of sit us in front of the computer and say, "You're up. You make yeah. a call." Yeah. And I tell you, when he first hit me with that. I was nervous, but I was ready. Yeah. You know, because I'd made so many calls with Shane. And you talked about earlier, how does that, you know, kind of help you with your, your real estate stuff? You know, again, just just the same. So when you're calling, you know, a lot of renters, you're, you need to get them qualified. Yeah. Right. So now yeah. the same thing with real estate. You know, when I got buyers that call, it's, you know, you got to get qualified. Yeah. Man. Uh, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you wasting mine. So, let, you know, let's 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 go through the proper channels here. So but but man, them call nights were fun. Uh, and they helped a lot, man. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I just want to plug Brandon a little bit here because, you know, of course you guys gave me my start, but I remember the one thing he told me probably day one. And I said, look, man, you know, first day tails wagging. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm like, what are we doing, yeah. man? And he said, uh, answer your phone and do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. And I'm like, cool, man. What else? And he's like, it's pretty much it. I'm like, that's what? good advice. Is it? That's I'm sound like, advice. Right? I'm like, you got you got nothing else? And yeah. he said, yeah. Uh, don't let me beat you here in the morning. <clears throat> Dude's a machine. 
Yeah. I'm like getting there at three in the morning. He's been there for an hour. I'm like, you know, yeah. stay until 10 at night. I mean, I can remember one time we were doing property management, real estate, and a moving company. You know, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm literally moving furniture in a three piece suit. Yeah. Running from there, going to show him. I mean, I was a hustler. You know, that, that's Del Mar Racing yeah, Hustlers. It, it, it man. is. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. So. I, you know what? I just completely forgot about the moving side. You were doing the moves too. Yeah. Remember when we had to move like the 900, like the 9,000 pound safe? I do on, like, remember that. On like, it was like fresh oak floor or something. Like it was like I it do. could dent easily. Do you I remember exactly. that? I know who it was and where it was. And, yep, and, yep, and, yep. and I remember you you guys called like so Tommy's like, Hey, um, I'm gonna need your help. I'm gonna I need like, like thirty seven people. Yeah, to- <laughs> yeah. And he was like, Listen, we got five guys and I was like, uh, <clears throat> what you, so what is it what's the problem? So it was me and Brandon Shackett in property management. He's like, I just need Oh, your bodies. boy Brandon, the guy you were talking about on the first show? Yeah, yeah, yeah Brandon Shackett. Oh, yeah. so he actually worked with you guys. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, so okay, okay. So All right. so uh um, He's a big boy too. I think I, yeah, yeah, I, think so I stalked he, him out on Facebook th- after we talked. He's a thick guy. Yeah. And so he was like, I need your help. And I remember being like, What could be that heavy? Dude, it was no joke. It was like the one of the biggest safes that we I've ever seen and the way they got it all like that whole day was eventful because it was like getting it in this you don't understand like you <laughs> couldn't put pressure on this floor right and so like we had to get it in the, it was an insane but Tommy like navigated through it was such a funny thing because we had all hands on deck all like everybody was there to help each other and that was one thing I wanted to ask you is like I know you came in and you seen kind of the team aspect like because because we had just really I don't want to say we're brand new to the team, right? But, but you're we were building. Growing. We were building, yeah. and like you were kind of a part of that process. So how has that helped you building your own team? Because I'm sure you took some things away. Sure. Oh, and, I took a lot of things away, man. There's yeah. no mistake about that. You know, it, it helped a lot because you know even down to the moving company, man. You know, a lot of the times when you when you show up to to move a safe, let's say, yeah, um, and there's there's two guys. You know, the answer can't be to the client. I don't know yeah you know what i mean that's, yeah. that's that's a bad answer so we always just kind of figured it out and that's kind of what i took away from the team aspect you know working with you guys is you know we always figured it out yeah I mean, there was a lot of things day in and day out that i'm asking you or whoever and they're like man i, I don't know we're just gonna figure it out yeah and man i i love that yeah. and so that's that's the biggest thing i think i took <clears throat> with me to my team is that I don't have all the answers. You know, a lot of times they're looking to me like, tell me, what do we do? How do we do this? How do we do that? How do yeah. we do that? And I'm like, let's just figure it out. You know, sometimes so the players give the coach the answers. That's it, man. You know, right. you know I always say the, the best source of learning is teaching. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I don't have all the answers, but it, it was cool, man. We had, we had a lot of fun, the whiteboard sessions. So I took, you know, whiteboard, everybody, it's mandatory in my office. You got to have a giant whiteboard and hopefully you <clears> fill it up, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I took that. And, and, and again, you know, some of the other things, you know, people, we would bicker. We'd all yeah. bicker at times, right? Oh, yeah. But at the end of the day, man, we were a family. Well, if somebody, if there, dude, we used to have <clears throat> team functions. Yeah. And yeah, like yes, the team did. functions, I mean, dude, we went to the Orioles game, and I don't even know if we can tell the story. <laughs> You can tell I don't even know if we can tell this story. Man. I mean, can we tell I mean, it? We can, it's we can try to keep right. So let me hear this story. I got so this is good stuff. We, we this is what I came up. for today. So listen, <laughs> so we would go as a team we would do like one team event. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Is this why you wore the Oreo colors today? No, no, uh, no, no. no. Right. Right, listen. Go ahead. I'm just um, looking for the Oreo colors. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'm colorblind. Uh, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's mustard. That's not orange. I'm used to pottery. Sorry. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right, all right. I'm a little bit so, colorblind. Listen, it's Sorry. all good. So, We're just picking with you, man. So we always would go, it would be a Ravens game or some. you know, yeah. we would do something, right? Yeah. So we got um, a big party bus and we were going to uh, Orioles open day, okay? So like it is, is insane. Like the streets are. Do you remember how crowded I remember it was? It like it was yesterday. So Tommy, I, pouring rain, has, pouring dude, rain, pouring rain. He has a knack though for being around stuff when things are like happening, right? <laughs> like I kid you not. Like Tom, oh, I know. Tommy has always got his phone. <laughs> oh, 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 I know all about that, dude. And it's wild because like Tommy, like you know, when you're around a group of people, like you don't realize who's there or not. You just everybody's there, right? Yeah. Well, dude, <laughs> I remember Tommy coming up to us going like, you're not going to believe what just happened. Because like there was a commotion over towards the porta potties, right? 
<laughs> so this girl <laughs> literally fell out of the porta potty <laughs> butt, butt naked. naked. What? Butt naked. Yeah, like door dude, blew open, dude, like Seinfeld so Kramer type <laughs> stuff. <man. laughs> like, yeah. Dude, was, and she rolled back what? in. She dude, got she back got, in. Dude, she went back in yep. like it was never this happened. Was this opening day? This was opening, was opening day. day. Okay, all right. That's a little bit more powerful. Okay. Thousands of people everywhere. Dude, I remember you took a video. I remember like there was two people in the back just kissing, and you were just like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, man. Dude, Open wow. days like Woodstock, dude, was, though. I mean, no, it's like, it was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. dude, it was. Again, that was like my first time on opening day. I was like, I don't know where I'm at. Like, I yeah. didn't even feel like a, an Orioles game did it. It was wild, man. Dude, I remember one of the, the one of the um, the like police officers was took took a shot with one of our interns. Do you remember that? I do. I do. And it was, it was uh, like, I know. She, yeah. yes, yeah, she was. She was like, yeah, I'll take a shot. Like it was, dude. It was wild. She tried to kiss him on the mouth. Dude, man, she, it was, it was, it was crazy, kiss, man. Dude, I believe. She, I, I think she, he obliged. Do you dude, know what I mean? I think. They were making out, dude. I think the, they. Like, yeah. I'm not. All right, we, I, we might want to cut these stories. We're gonna start indicting people. In dude, here. no, I, mean, I, I don't even know. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, who no, it, no. We have no idea who it was, but I'm fairly confident she might have kissed him on the mouth and drank a and she hit a shot. I know she hit a shot. Damn. With him. I mean, we are talking about the Orioles, so what they're getting paid, you can only imagine what security is getting paid. You know <laughs> dude, what I'm saying? Uh, dude, and I'm an Orioles fan, but it was was it security or police? Shout out Peter Angelos. I, you know, it, it was, might have been. It might have been police. I thought it was for some I th reason. I think, I think it was a police right. officer. I think he might be right. Dude, it was like that day. I remember coming back and being like, this is not real life. What we just yeah, experienced. It was wild, like, man. And we didn't even go to the game. Do you remember? Like, I did. We, like, never we, made it in. We never made it into the game because the streets were so wild. How many real estate transactions happened that day? You guys get any deals off of that? <sighs> probably a lot. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. I mean, well, you had them loosened up. Because yeah. we it was like a Thursday, right? It was like a regular yeah, uh, it was it was a weekday. But no, like it's so funny because Tommy, uh, we were all like, whenever Tommy was around, you knew something electric <laughs> was going to happen. I don't know. Always. Dude, it was electric. It was electricity <laughs> that was going to happen. I it, mean, that was the one thing I can take away is you were always kind of the team. You you had the entertainment value down. Like, dude, <laughs> he has the charisma that we, talk, yeah, we were talking oh, yeah. about. Oh, and yeah. that's so key to, to real estate. And we we're talking about teams. And one of the things I wanted to touch on today, um, was the way you've built your team. Mm -hmm. And I've always kind of admired you for the way you've built it because you, you kind of remind me of, of Blair Rainier a little bit, my broker, because he always told me, you know, build yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, don't build yourself equal to Rainier. You know what I mean? Yep. Have your own identity because he realized that the stronger we are individually, the stronger the team is. That's and correct. you have literally done that. I mean, you've encouraged every one of your team members to have their own identity. Yep. And I know that some people probably would feel like, you know, it might be a little bit gimmicky to have a guitar realtor or a racing realtor. But the thing is that people don't understand is it's not gimmicky when that's who you are. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like sitting on this podcast today, people are like, oh, it's just, no, this is who we are as people, you know, and it'd be more gimmicky if you're just sitting there in a suit and tie every day, yeah. you know, just playing that role. To me, yeah, that's, that's a gimmick. To, me, stuff, to right? me, that's a gimmick, right? Yeah, so yeah. so how, has that, how has that helped you? And and who else that helped you? Well, I think it's I helped me because, you know, it makes people want to be a part of what we're doing yeah. over there because, you know, there's a lot of places that, you know, if the, you have a team leader and everybody, all they think about when they hear that, that team name is, is that individual. And, you know, one of the things I told all my people is I don't want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I don't want that, you know. Um, Steve, you know, my partner, he – He's a baseball guy. He umpires a lot of games, and one day, you know, is, is uh, the home run realtor. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, little Kenny J. Shout out, yeah. little Kenny J. Yeah, um, same thing. You know, shout so, out, little, little Kenny, big so, Kenny. So, shout out, so yeah, big Kenny too. Big Kenny, right? Kenny so, J. I know he's listening so, too out there, in Colorado. You know, that's another Delmar. We'll get yeah, into that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, OG Delmar. Love guy. you, Kenny J. Kenny yeah. G. Yeah, Kenny little, G or little, Jack? We call him Kenny all, G. Uh, it's all the above. We, yeah. Kenny, uh, we call him well, Kenny G. Hey, we call him Kenny you. G. Shout he's out to both. Shout <laughs> out to he's both. In the, he's in them saxes off. You know, say, <laughs> same thing. So, you know, we just wanted to create an identity for everybody. Right. And I and I <clears> have, <throat> and, I, and I won't forget it. And that person knows today. Everybody commented on one of my Facebook things one time. It was like, I don't know, another gimmick realtor or something like that. And it's like, yeah, but you know who that is, though. Right, exactly. You remember that, guy. but you're always yeah. gonna have people that have a pit. dude. Again, motivators. Yeah, I mean, it's just it is what it is. Like, I mean, I think there is just <clears throat> you're gonna get it. Yeah, I it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Perception is people. We just said this. We, we were talking about perception it. is people's reality, and your perception is your reality. So, yeah. in your world, 
that person is another gimmick to you. Yep. In your world, that's a that's who you that's your identity. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter as long as you're doing it for you. We had this conversation last week about marketing. And like as long as you it doesn't matter. Like Bobby Joe well, I shouldn't say that. Bob Sinagra. No, it's Bobby Joe. Well, sorry, Bobby well, Joe. Yeah, we're down well, It's Bobby it's Joe, Bobby baby. Joe. <laughs> Bob, but Bob Sorry, Bob. Love Bob you, Bob has made his his real estate career <clears throat> off of not like marketing himself like that. Yeah. He is very low key very but he does his he transaction is. based on who he is right so i think there's just as long as you're being genuine to you gotta who be you true are, to yourself man i think you'll be successful and really and that was our major key is like yeah. a lot of kids are getting into real estate and i shouldn't say kids because there's a lot of uh, you know older people getting into real estate now but what i worry about is long term this is the best market to get in and if you're not being genuine to who you are right you yeah the, you're not going to be around for long right no. yeah, is that yeah no you hit the nail right on the head you know I, that's what i tell you know i tell all my people they're all i, don't know, I shouldn't say worry but oh man there's a zillion people with real estate licenses right now and i'm like last year financially in real estate was should have been the best year of your career yeah so for the i feel almost sorry for the people that came in during that year because now they're starting to get their butts kicked yeah it's on you, it's you know an unrealistic I mean? now they actually have to sell yeah that that's right they got to pick up yeah. well now you're competing you're competing with the big dogs mm -hmm. that's right because the big dogs who have made their name or made their reputation and it doesn't there's so many different ways to market yourself and facebook is. is just one of them correct facebook is just one of the avenues yeah and i think what is however you market yourself as long as you're being true to who you are you're going to be in the conversation right either it's word of mouth if people are like hey i don't see him on billboards facebook's you know magazine cover whatever but they're like yo this dude he'll get you to the finish line per se you know with then that's him that's he's not he's not breaking from that i just think if you are um you gotta be who you are if you're trying to force yourself into a gimmick that's the problem so if all it's your never people gonna work that way right no, and all your people right. who are th that's who they truly are yeah that's they're not gimmicking you know just to be like hey i'm this so i think as long as and i see uh the real roses yeah dude, i mean my man's that's what just I'm saying. cutting it dude my man's cutting it up you know in, trying bro. to get him on here for a live set roses. sometime yeah, and yeah. I mean, they you know they they that's who they are that's, you know and that that's why it works so well right most people don't even know josh and daisy per se but they know the real roses. That's yeah. what I'm. I mean, right? that's what I would say. I literally know the home highlight realtor. Everybody kind of knows Kenny popping up in his videos, doing the funny things. Yeah. I mean, you know, but he, you need to be bold like that in today's you world. Have you, to. you have to to stand can't out. Be boring, man. Because every Brandon's got a cool video. I think Maurice. Give a shout out to Maurice Digital Brand. I, I know he shot this, but he does the the video with the the potato chip aisle. Yeah, and he talks about how you know the ones that they they pay the money for the the main brands to stand out on the end, and then yeah. you've got everything else that's like on the, the main aisle that's like and he calls it the sea of sameness yeah and that's the thing you can't be like everybody else in today's world to really stand out because we live in a world where we're, we're scrolling and if it doesn't grab your attention right away they're just going to move on so i yeah. think it's i think it's important in that aspect but uh, don't you think real estate how do you how do you make real estate fun you know because i think for so long <laughs> doing what we're so doing long, we know how to do it exactly that's <laughs> what i'm saying we know how to make it fun but i think <clears throat> for the longest time i feel like real estate you hear the same things over and over again so it becomes white noise to a lot of people mm -hmm. when you hear if you have 17 real estate that's friends, actually a good question like yeah. when you have 17 real estate friends and all they post about is extremely low interest rates or i can get you ninety thousand dollars in equity in your home it becomes white noise yeah right so how do you stand man. out in that's, the, a, that's, that's a good a question great point. that's a great question how yeah. do you stand out in this market to go hey listen I, yes, I can get you ninety thousand over what your home's worth, and your interest rates are extre yeah, extremely low. But here's what I can do, sure. right? How do you stand out in that pack? Because you've done a good job at it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm glad you asked the question there you know, because I I oftentimes try to stay on the leading edge of things, right? I don't, I don't want to be that guy. Like everybody knows, the interest rates are starting to creep back up. Guess what? People are still going to buy houses. Yeah. yeah, right. So you have a lot of your your you know newer realtors or, or old school realtors set in their ways that are you know boohoo there's no inventory there's no there's no this there's no that there is yeah you, know, you, you just gotta grind so what i try not to do <clears throat> is is you know be that guy that's out there screaming at because like you and everybody else i've seen that video from 100 different people 100 different times yeah 
So I try to stay ahead of everything. You know, I study the market. I keep my finger on the pulse like all day, every day. This is what I do, man. This is how my kids eat. Um, you know, my oldest boy is in college right now. Shout out WVU. Um, w? Yeah, that, w? That, that's expensive. My youngest, he likes riding four wheelers and tearing stuff up. So that's expensive too. So <laughs> point being, I have to stay. You know, on, on your craft I, I i do man and i think about it all day every day so creativity is the word that comes to that's mind. right yeah um i try to stay creative um you know i, I try to do things before anybody else if yeah. possible yeah. Right? yeah sometimes it's a flop but yeah. i'm trying you know i mean you sometimes. guys talked about it in, in a different episode that you know you got to fail forward sometimes um yeah one of the things i did struggle with admittedly is uh you know i i started putting certain little things out there on social media almost like a tag if yeah. you will yeah and now everybody you hear me everybody uses it yeah i struggle with that at first yeah but then somebody said you know the big what's what's the saying the biggest form of flattery, flattery is, imita is, yeah. is imitation, imitation man yeah. and i struggled with that for for a while because i was growing yeah right i i, I was growing i was i was young i was for lack of better words, down here, trying to get up here. And so I struggled with that, man. I'm like, man, these, these people are eating off my plate. But then I had to to get the mindset of, you know, if these people are following what I'm doing, then I'm out in front. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. On, I'm on the, the cutting edge. So, I mean, again, creativity is, is, is what you need, and I think that's what kind of sets me out there a little yeah. bit. I think you have to be competitive, and that's <laughs> a part of your competitive nature. But also you have to be willing to share. I think That's real true. estate is a, the problem is we as a community of real estate agents, I don't think we do a lot of collaborations to, to tie it all back in, collaborations together on how we can make real estate fun yeah. for the consumer to not tune out because I think it's important for the consumer to hear some of the stuff that's going on, right? Sure. There's law, there's legislation right now going on. We were just about, talking about this. About yeah. buyer, buyer representation might cost the buyer, the buyer. something, yeah. right? And they don't know anything about it, but how do you have someone sit there and watch something for five minutes, an informative clip and make it interesting? Because <laughs> the problem is most people tune out within 30 to 40 seconds if they're yeah. not into it. Right. So you got to get to the meat and, and really quick. But I just there's there's so much of the white noise that it it kind of overshadows that because you're self branding self promoting I think it it sometimes hurts you to almost continually post the same thing that other real estate agents do. Yep, I agree one hundred you know? percent because again, you know if 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 me and Matt post a, the same thing every day, same exact video, same exact content, doesn't matter which agent you choose, right? We're both doing the same thing, so so we try to to give the consumer reason. Yeah. choose us you yeah. know what i mean and sometimes that different video right wrong or indifferent they go wow well, you know i post at the racetrack all the time and yeah. it's funny because when i go live at the racetrack it, it's typically a lot of clients are soon to be clients because they're interested in what yeah. they're doing in life yeah you know what i mean they don't want to hear about interest rates they don't they know they're gonna they, buy a house yeah, they, right? everybody we all know a lot about the market we us three can sit here and bore people with the market all day we long could. People want to choose somebody they can relate to. Yeah. You know, and you make things relatable to people, whether it's at the racetrack or talking about the JWO. You know, we all experience these things. We were talking about that last week, you know, with nostalgia. I I, I leverage nostalgia a lot because it's relatable to the people our age. Yeah. You know, but one of the things I wanted to, to kind of talk about too is with inventory being low and inventory is not low well okay there's an abundance of buyers okay. Okay. That, that's that's a good point that's a great point but but with with the inventory like being low from the that I like is good that. i mean statistically inventory is not low right yeah your, your average is up but there's there's an abundance of buyers but again we won't bore you with but this. how do you okay so like our whole program at rainier is all about the off-market deal mm -hmm. you know we we are we're constantly hunting we want to find you know we're most of the stuff we do is enlisted a lot of times yeah I don't know. I mean, obviously you could go door to door and all these things. What do you do to find that inventory? Do you attack people, you know, in their DMs? Are you, you know, uh, everything? It, what do you, what Real do you do? Marketing, what, man. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest thing is, <laughs> you know, my dad is, is a local guy was in sales his whole life. And everybody's saying, you know, you got to get into sales. You got to get into sales. I, I didn't want to get into sales. I swore I'd never get into sales. Now I'm in sales. Yeah. So, you know, my dad's built a lot of relationships with people. <clears throat> so that, that certainly helps. 
um, you know, pounding the social media platforms from day one, you know, that kind of helps. I mean, I do everything, man. I call people, you know, if, if times get slow, I'll, I'll knock on doors. Like I'm not above any of that. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, and again, not to get off topic, but I think that's why some of my team, you know, loves me so much. Cause yeah. like, man, when the going gets tough, like he'll, he'll knock on, he'll go stand in the middle of the highway. Yeah. You told a story one time on Facebook and I kind of, hopefully you re, I'm sure you remember it. Hopefully you can replicate it on set today, but you told a story about somebody was trying to buy a home and then you went and knocked on a, a door literally in the same neighborhood yeah. to find the person, the home yeah. that wasn't even listed. Yeah. Like tell this story. Cause I, yeah, yeah. It, so, I'm very interested in hearing this actually again. It's a pretty cool story. So I got a couple of them. Um, sounds crazy. Right. But so I had this guy, you know, he came through on, on my lead generation source and, uh, said, you know, um, I'll be, I'll buy in a year or whatever. So, you know, I just stayed in contact with him and, and finally he called me and said, Hey man, I'm ready. I'm like, cool, man. What are you looking for? You know, I'm, I'm looking for this, 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 this. And I'm like, all right, cool, where at? And he told me, like, exactly where he wanted to be. Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, cool, man. So, you know, I'm hitting the MLS. I'm do, doing the normal stuff, and the, and there's nothing. Yeah. But this guy stuck with me for a year, and I stuck with him for a year. And uh, I, want, I wanted to make, you know, his dreams a reality. So another little plug is one of my slogans. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I honestly was make riding through this reality. neighborhood. I think this is the same story. Um, I'm riding through this neighborhood and, and all of a sudden, boom, I see this house and I'm like, that's what the guy wants. That's where he wants the whole nine. So I go up and, uh, pretty much knock on the door Yeah. and the lady comes to the door and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, listen, this is, it's going to sound crazy. I said, uh, I got somebody who wants to buy your house. Yeah. And she's like, really? And I said, yeah. And she was like, that's interesting. I said, why is that? She said, I was getting it ready to put on the market. I was going to call a realtor today. And I was like, wow, so you going back to that energy, yeah, right time, yeah. right place type deal. Yeah. And, uh, That's Tommy. That's, energy. That's yeah. Tommy. He bought it. And um, I sold her a house. When, you know, when she moved on, she, she had to move out. Yeah. So She doubled up. I doubled, doubled up. up. We did double down. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, another story. Uh, it's kind of similar. It was one of the biggest houses I ever sold, right? Yeah. And I'm working on selling this thing. And uh, <clears throat> me and the other the other agent, uh, super cool dude, Rob Payne, and uh, you know my guys talk about buying a house, and his last his last no per se was this neighbor. Yeah. Right. Well, we're on forty three acres on a panoramic view. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's this random guy over here. So you know, I'd, I'd almost had enough at this point, and yeah. uh, he said, "Yeah, if that neighbor's house wasn't there," I said, "Well, I imagine everything's for sale." Oh, well, I'll buy it. And I said, what would, you, what would you give him for it right now? And he gave me a number. We went over and knocked on the door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we knocked on the door. Yeah. Now, he didn't end up buying it, but he yeah. could have. And, and it's funny because the guy originally was like, no, I don't think we're going to sell. And I'm like, well, what if, we, what if we got you this? And he was like, yeah, I think I'd sell. You know, so. Yeah. That's it's, the Ted DiBiase. It man. is, man. Remember it, the Ted DiBiase is, photo? Is, <laughs> the money, the money yeah. belt. Everybody's yeah, got a price, yeah, man. Yeah. So that was kind of like the JWO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We Everyone, brought JWO back there. We had the money belts, and, and I, mean, know, I think they're still going around. You know, okay, yeah. so that's a, that's a good question because I see Brandon do the money belts and, and the belts, and that's really cool. And, and we're talking about competition and how do you make real estate fun, and we can all talk about you know how we make real estate fun to the consumer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But how do you make real estate fun to your team? Like to want to do deals, is it through competition? Is it through like Brandon does with the belts? You I know, think it, it is, man. I, 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 yeah, I, I think the competitions are fun. The in-house competition. I mean, we had a lot of fun with that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we we kind of started the belt thing. That and, was yeah. That was and it's still in. going. That, yeah. That's been five years. I love it. I love seeing all no, those. What was great that's was such, that's a really so cool thing for for me watching outside in because <clears> they would have the sales guys would have the call nights. And sometimes I'd sit in, you know, just because it was a team morale kind of thing, like yeah. all the boys getting together and, and yeah. watching. And you could see the look when someone got a hot, you know, a hot lead. You could see everyone's face like, like they were happy for him, yeah. but they were like, I can't let this happen. Like I right. got, so like then the next person up is like, all right, well, I'm going to call. And they, so it made them, that it made them significantly better on the phone because A, they heard other people talking, right? Yeah. And I'm a big proponent. That's what, remember, I said in the first that's episode. That's uh, That's what I said. The first episode is how you learn how to do real estate is by being around other agents. It's not simply the course itself <clears throat> only teaches you so much, yeah. right? And you can only apply so much 
in the real world like when you get out you can't say well what's the meets and bounds of this pro like right. being yeah. around other real estate agents help you you know like i said besides ethics and fair housing all that stuff the, the you don't know how to complete a real estate transaction if you're no. not there. Well, no. it's, it's like, and I'll give a shout out to Steve Brown, a home run realtor, right? It's like, it's like baseball a little bit. No two scenarios are ever really alike. Yeah. It's like a snowflake, you know? Yeah. It's like, they're not, and so yeah, it's hard to replicate every single thing you learn and apply that, you know, from the class it, to the real world. You almost have to be in the field to learn and experience. And, that, and that's where the value of somebody who does a lot of transactions comes in. Yeah. Not even somebody who completes all the deals. Obviously you want closers, but people who are involved in more transactions understand have more experience and they can get you through more scenarios i'm just sitting here you know? thinking about you know you're asking how to make it fun some of the stories <laughs> cool. tell, i want to hear some tell me some of the best man, stories you got i, I gotta uh, hear these come on man i, I don't know i wasn't yeah come I'll on let shane lead the way i'm not sure Dude, i mean listen um <laughs> so yeah, straight face i love it so um there, <laughs> there <laughs> okay. there's like a lot of stories that we were involved in where i mean like so, so let me put it this way um at one time all right so we um me and tommy in the same office together and someone comes in agent comes in it's like hey we're about to take over this house for management and or sale you know i need y'all to come with me you know because you know it, it was a dicey situation this this house uh, was at that point uh, under investigation for a meth lab. Do you remember nah, that? One hundred percent, man. And, I was and, hoping like breaking bad <laughs> shit, like breaking bad shit, yeah, Break, yeah, breaking yeah, bad yeah, shit, like yeah. breaking bad dude, shit. Dude, so yeah. I will never forget this day. Damn. So it's like me. So in the minivan. So Tommy had the minivan that day. It was me. Ball him, tires. Yeah, ball tires. I mean, literally, like squealing no, wheels. No, no. <laughs> So we pull up. That's where I was at. And our, and our, you know, he, he looks back and goes, if I give you the sign, like, I need your help because I don't know. Like, yeah. we're rolling up to a legitimate drug house at yeah. this point. Yeah. And, yeah. True um, story. And basically, it's not a safe situation. And that's what people don't understand. Like, as a real estate agent, we're in a lot of dicey situation where, All the time. where like, you things could go wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and all he had to do was deliver the notice, like, hey, this is going on the market. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I will never forget this guy answers the door. This is you. You were and, delivering the notice? No, no. We, there's another, we? Yeah, we, okay. yeah. So we had another agent who was taking it over. Um, and I will never forget this guy answered the door. It looked like Charles Manson. <laughs> and, dude, and he was going through withdrawal. You could see, like, he was butt shaking. Naked. I was mean, butt, well, let's just put it out like there. This, he was butt, literally, his pants at the beginning, he had pants on. Yeah. By the end, they were, they they just, were, they were bent down by his knees. Yeah. Like it was wa True like story, wild, man. dude. And like, this is what I'm talking about. When Tommy <laughs> was around, this would be almost a once a week occurrence where we would go somewhere and yeah. it would just be something wild. Somebody <laughs> would be butt naked or there would be something insane where you go like, I've never seen this before yeah, in my the, life. And the thing yeah. is, like, you got, in a lot of ways, you probably feel empathy fun. for these dude, people. it was fun. We'd it was fun. I yeah. mean, we'd laugh about it, yeah. but it was funny because literally the day after that, like, so we we leave the house and we're like, oh man, this is gonna be like I don't know how you're gonna show that house yeah. like because yeah. you couldn't he couldn't even get inside he wouldn't let him in and he was like I don't feel comfortable going inside like yeah obviously. somebody else. yeah I so get that. he was like listen like, that's not a people. good situation I delivered the notice but the owner of the property has to understand like this this is not right dude literally that night the house was raided yeah oh, literally that night the that's house was crazy. Raided. It's so it's just with us. And it, it just, had it nothing to do with the, it had nothing to do with us, but it was just that the, it was the owner of the property or That's the so seller fortunate. of the property yeah. was coming in mm. and was like, dude, we're either gonna rent it or sell it, but I need you guys to deliver a notice to get inside. <laughs> and what's wild is th the next day we were like, That's a could you imagine as an agent going into that house and something dicey hat like Yeah. You as an agent you walk across a meth lab? Yeah. Like that, that's, now, that's a, that, that could now, be look, a, looking back. It's like, wow, man. That, that, and you that, guys are looked at like at the bad guys, crazy. but you got nothing against the people in the house or what they're doing. You're just, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're just do. doing your yeah. job, you know? And yeah. so, you know, well, and we didn't know that's the, the wild part is we didn't know there was a <laughs> yeah. meth lab. We didn't know any of that. We had no idea. Yeah. We didn't know it was under investigation until literally they were like, Hey, they called us and was like, yeah. Hey, um, the house is all locked up. You guys can go in. Uh, we talked to the owner, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, this house has been under investigation for like six months. And we're like, it was oh. wild, dude. So I'm like, well, what? And that's how things happen. Like they can't tell anyone. Yeah. I understand. Kick the door and everything. So we were like, we're scrambling around finding vendors to go rekey the door because we had to get it rekeyed. So I remember that, dude. It was, but 
it was never a lack of i mean there uh, we can tell you with vendors he introduced <laughs> us to crazy. to one of our main vendors still weeble yeah shout and out like, larry dude shout out larry toss like he mhic all that stuff and he literally was like i remember we had a jam like we were like man we need somebody to do this and he's like i got somebody yeah his name's yeah. weeble yeah he was like he'll come through and build this deck for like 10 bucks and now like, like right yeah and now he's mhic licensed and short Full all that should stuff. we plug him should we plug him go TN give him a plug yeah man. Give TNT, him a plug. i think it's tnt maintenance or tnt home solutions uh dude he is i can tell you right now he's always been there dependable and yeah. and you turned us on to him so yeah, like yeah i remember when he he had first came to me and was like hey you know and we'll touch on this too as a matter of fact so he came to me and was kind of like hey i know you're doing your thing with, with with property management over there uh you know plug me in bro like what, what 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 can we do so i got him a shot and uh that that's when you were like man we're in a jam you know da 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 da, da. and and we kind of put him together man now he's, he's got a very very successful business i tell him he owes me all the time but i'm just i'm just busting the shop shut no anything and and you know he'll do anything for anything you. Man. like literally he'll do anything guy. and that's what that's what's great about you know relationships are key in this business yes that's, just, that's what i was just getting ready to say you know it, it, that when we, when we talk about larry it's like man you know relationships are monumental in this right like we i went and did my own thing i left you guys but i ain't got nothing negative to say you know what yeah. I, mean? I don't think they have anything negative to say about me and it wasn't like a, a nasty breakup per se right it was just like yeah. it's kind of my time and yeah and for me to go do my thing and and find myself a little bit and you know touching on the camaraderie with other agents that that's how we beat zillow i don't know if you guys know but but zillow threw in the towel man they're they're no longer doing the brokerage right because everybody was scared to death about zillow yeah uh, yeah they've officially thrown the towel in man they're just going to be zillow again be, and, and i think well, that's good because we were, we were talking about that the other day it's well, good that's, you mentioned that that's what i heard amazon well, was getting in the game you know here's the thing but 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 what they they can't do or create is the company exactly exactly and as long as we as agents then we can fight them off listen we can stave off anybody by saying you when you ask for something don't short sell yourself because you want to cut the other agent exactly that's right because here's the thing you're not cutting you're not cutting that <clears throat> person's throat you're cutting your own that's yep. right because you're doing the same amount of services for cheap yep. and what no one gets is again real estate how much is involved in a real estate transaction like for property management you've seen it as property managers we don't get paid enough like the amount no. of stuff that we have to do you've seen well it. underpaid it's well underpaid for <laughs> yeah. what we do we do more on property management and rental side than a, a average lot. sales yeah. sales agent that's why would i got into sales I was that's, like, that's too much work for but me but that, <laughs> that trains yeah. you for it and i think that to your point you know if we all can stay together you know and again it doesn't mean you work for keller williams you work for rainier i work but I'm saying as a whole, holistically, we all are in this this fraternity together. Yep. Exactly. And we all should be rooting for each other. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? Listen, I'm not saying there is only so many pieces of pie per se, right? Sure. But if you're good at what you do, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't you're matter. Gonna eat, man. You're gonna you're always gonna be good. Doesn't matter. So I just think that you know with, Now granted, there's some out there that are tough to root for. We as we all know, <laughs> but I'm just saying I don't care. But. Well, you know, I, uh, I just, for the most part, yeah. I just think for, and like you said, there is no ill will on our side of the fence. We are happy for you. I, and when Trader said, can we, let's let's have Tommy on. I said, yeah. let's, hell yeah, hell like, yeah. let's talk about yeah. some stories. Because I was like, every time, Tommy used to, even when he left, um, and he would come over because your son was going to the little base. The gym the, next the, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would come in at night and <laughs> yeah. just come in and just while he was and waiting. Just hang out. Did, and just hang out. Still, he's working for a different brokerage. We would just yeah. would come in and chop it up and, and we would just laugh. And, I mean, dude, we'd hold court basically. We would. Like my room, <clears throat> we had a bit, I had a big couch in my room and literally Bob would come in, Brandon yeah. would come in, Rich, great, everybody man. would come in and it would just be, we would tell stories. Yeah, I, it's, yeah great. it's funny though. You know, we were talking about this, and the relationships are key. We talked about this at the end of the last, probably the end of the last show we shot, and we were talking about how you know you always put the, the client before the deal. I was even using it as art because we were talking we related to art at the time. But you put the art before the before the money. You know what I mean? If you put the money first, that's that's a short term outlook. But putting the relationship Very first short-term. is a long term outlook. And we talk about that not just with the consumer, but with the other agents and the other sure. brokers that we're all involved in and you know i, I just think that's that's so important because like, just like i said it is very cutthroat it, it is, is it is a world where everybody wants to be the big the big dog you know and 
it's just you know yeah but, i tell you man it's a wise guy once told me too in real estate is you know not that i'm making any kind of great money now i mean i do okay but he said you know when you're really going to make money in real estate and i was like when's that and he said when you stop doing it for the money that's right well at the time i've got the minivan with the ball tires you know yeah. what i mean like like life was rough yeah. man i'm gonna tell a little bit of my story it was it was wasn't easy yeah you know what i mean it wasn't easy jumping into this career you know i did okay at doing some warehouse management stuff you know and and got into real estate man it was it was tough it was tough but you know we through the relationships that we yeah. have with other agents yeah. and, and things of that nature you know we just here we are today but 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 to hear that yeah. with bald tires on your van and eat noodles and noodles that you, you want to know when you're going to make money in real estate yeah when you stop doing it for money and originally i was like what the hell does that mean yeah well you know what and really but that's the, what it means that's what we're yeah it, it just does. at the end of the day it comes down to you stop caring about not the deal per se but what comes after the deal you're just yeah. more worried about that person that you're trying to get to the finish line yep to touch on one of your you know sure. your thing it's like you just look at them and go you want this house and i have to do it whatever commission whatever monies are attached i don't care if it's yep. the if it's the lowest amount i've ever received doesn't matter i'm gonna get you to there and i think when you start caring that way yeah. where it's like you're singularly focused on getting you in a house and not because that's because it's your want not like you're willing yeah. to sell them any that's when it see changes that, man. People, yeah. changes. people see that and changes. people you know we were talking about the creativity <clears throat> that's that's what people talk about yeah right they don't they don't tell their friend at work Oh, well, you know, don't buy a house. You know, the interest rates are creeping up. Like, they don't say that. No. Yeah. They say, have you ever seen that racing realtor guy on, it, on social media? Yeah, have you yeah. ever seen Shay? You, you know what I mean? Um, that's that's kind of how you stay ahead, I But think. you talk yeah. about other agents, and, you know, I, I think, for the most part, everybody's cordial with each other. But you do have from time to time people who don't treat you as fairly. Sure. And you naturally, I think, we as people want to not treat them fairly when we have an opportunity to have the upper hand on something but i've never been in that mindset you know just because somebody treats me one way or slights me on something doesn't mean i have to come back and slight them as well you know what i mean i i just i yeah. want to always conduct myself and treat somebody else like i want to be treated and you know because if, if we're constantly cutting each other's throats this is what's gonna happen to all of us sure we're all gonna come down high road you know you gotta take the high road like we yeah. talked about earlier and you know? it's tough man like, and, and i'm not i'm not sitting here preaching and trying to be on my hours no, none of that bullshit. No, but i'm just not. i'm just sitting here thinking like that's the kind of mindset we all need to have because that's what makes us stronger it is you know and, and lord knows we've all you know had difficulties with other agents and and myself included and uh you know we we're talking about putting your client first but if, if you go into it like man this guy or this girl you know whatever i can't i don't want to do that you're not putting your client first yeah, yeah. exactly you know and there, all, there's yeah. been many cases where i didn't want to do that but then yeah. i was like that's not fair to that's not who i am and that's not yeah. fair to my client it's all love at the end of the day yeah. too man and, and, and like, believe me the the public knows man if you got something going on with somebody every, everybody knows right yeah. so if yeah. they see that that you conducted yourself a certain way man. oh yeah they, that word travels man that's yeah you can't teach that you no money can buy that you know what i mean yeah. like if you look at my reviews a lot what a lot of people say is he must not have any other clients because he treated me like i was his only client yeah you know and i think that's uber important yeah. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm People sure they'll say Uber. I don't know. I'm yeah. getting old. Yeah, I mean, Uber. <laughs> Uber nah, Uber's good. I mean, yeah. mega, 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 mega. Uber. Super <laughs> mega powers. Ooh, Let's yeah. talk about something fun, man. Too much R business. Racing. Let's... Racing. Okay. How's racing? I know they're, they're giving their signals. So, so, how's racing coming, man? Talk to us about racing. We got a couple minutes. We Wait, how much time we got? One minute. One, two minutes. Two minutes. Two What's minutes. your next race? Give us plug your next race. Uh, Who are you racing? Plug, yeah. Probably third week of april at co new jersey i think it's called summer slam built okay. a pretty all right yeah summer yeah. Slam, baby. Yeah. 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 Built a pretty wicked car um should be should be out any yeah. day yeah. just bought a new trailer um so it's fun man it's a family it's dra family drag drag just straight up drag. drag racing man we're gonna try to go 199 ish in the quarter mile front wheel drive oh actually before we get into we do need to i do need to talk about one thing so and you're gonna have to give us a little more time just a slight maurice we'll pay or something I don't know if I should have said that, but we're talking about racing. We're talking about, I, I have to go too, but anyway, we're talking about racing, right? Yeah. And we're talking about, you mentioned your dad earlier. Yeah. Okay. 
to, to kind of bring all this full circle and to bring deal making full circle, Tommy's dad years ago started Red House Motors in Del Mar, right? I remember when he started it, he named it, named it after a song. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix song. And it was next to Bailey's Garage in Del Mar, right? Uh -huh. So many years later, back in the summer. This is crazy. Th this is like literally what? I don't know. We're, we're a bunch, I mean, we're a bunch of just yeah. crazy high school kids. Yeah. Remember all those days, right? So many years later, back this summer, Tommy calls me up and says, I got a referral for you. He says, I want you to go talk to Bobby Bailey. He wants to sell his property. Yeah. Right. So he gives me the referral, worked on this thing for a while. It was a tough property to sell. It wasn't, not everybody in the world was looking for that type They're of property. <laughs> wind up, anyhow, long story short, wind up closing the deal yeah. for full price just last week. Shout out to Bobby Bailey. We love hey, you. We love you, brother. That's that electricity you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and so Tommy that's and I exactly literally wind up being a yeah. part of a transaction of a property that him and I have a, a connection to from our youth. That, that cool. to me, Delmar, that that's to me cool. right there is worth more than all the for money life. in the world hey. for life. And speaking so, of JWO, maybe we should start the RWO, the real estate world order or the Del Marvel world order. Okay. Or, okay. All, you know I what like I mean? Let's going. start I mean, that. So, right? I mean, the is that what Let's we're all, doing? I don't know. Who, so, some, who's getting stunned? Are we going to start stunning people? I, mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't think thing. we I don't think we can, can do can, that. Can, can stunning people back? at settlement? Can I come back on another episode? <laughs> you're, like, anytime you want, bud. You know anytime you want. I want to a regular. You know? yeah, yeah, you're on. Gonna, yeah, dude, that's the what we're building here. There's so much yeah. we still, I still want to talk well, about. This is the introduction. This is the introduction to you coming on more than You're here. This is the walk-up music. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just your, this is your introduction. This is your right initial match. Right on. You kept, you rolled under the ring. <laughs> I like you rolled keep ring. sliding, man. I'm still a little pale. Dude, I haven't yeah, got my tan yeah, yet. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, dude. We're just we're getting you prepped. So, I get it. So this is how we end it. I then, think right? we need to end it like that. Yeah. We kind of ended the same Full way we circle. started. Yeah. 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 So Full circle. Uh, folks, that's it. Dumb Harbor Home Team Racing Dumb Harbor Home Team Race a Realtor. We're near development company. Maryland, Delaware, Delaware Group of Long Prop and Foster. Prop Culture, baby. Prop Culture, Maurice. See ya. See ya. Peace.